People sometimes use the word concrete jungle to describe a city. Well, this really looks like a concrete jungle. All you can see is concrete. These structures are like mini skyscrapers, but they don't have any windows. Inside these structures is a vertical maze. These buildings are deserted. They've been entirely stripped. There's nothing left, at least on the lower levels. Everything's been taken away. Whatever work or activity was going on here, it's clear that it stopped a long time ago. Located in Buffalo, New York, this set of buildings is intertwined with the city's past. These are well removed from the city center. They're right on the edge of the city limits, clustered around a bend in the Buffalo River. Buffalo is a city that's almost forgotten today, but in its heyday, it was one of the most important cities in the US. I keep coming back to this site because this is a magical place. I feel spirits here. Local resident Larry Maruk has run almost 200 volunteer tours of this historic site. The first time I came to this place, I just remembered, you know, like how abandoned it was, how desolate it was. Inside, you see a series of these tall tubes. Like, some are made of concrete, some are made of steel. It's very eerie, dark, your voice echoes. There's nothing else quite like this. We come across this almighty shaft that seems to go up for hundreds of feet. Whatever was happening here, it was a very large operation. Most of the building is an empty shell, but on the highest level is a clue to its purpose. Right now, we're at the top of the American complex. What we're seeing over here is all the conveyor belts as if time stood still. They're basically the transportation system. There's this long open space with a conveyor belt that stretches about 200 feet from one end to the other. So we're 150 feet up in the air here. The product that was brought up here needed to be not only transported up here, but then had to be moved back and forth for some reason using these conveyor belts. The product they were moving was grain. It's a commodity that turned the frontier town of Buffalo into a powerful metropolis. In the 19th century, the United States really emerged as a major player in the export market, and they were sending more goods than ever back to Europe, the old world, and beyond. And Buffalo would be a major player because of a problem faced by grain farmers. Most of the commodities were being grown in the heartland, and there was no easy way to get those products to market. You have a range of mountains blocking access to the East Coast. The roads were mostly just muddy tracks in those days. And the railroads were developing, but they really didn't have the capacity to handle large quantities of goods. To get produce to the East Coast, the U.S. invested in a new trade superhighway. The solution to the problem was the Erie Canal which was a 363-mile artificial waterway. It was a huge man-made project, and it allowed goods to be transferred from the central United States farming area all the way to New York and then out to Europe and beyond. And the beginning of that journey on the Erie Canal was Buffalo. Suddenly, Buffalo became America's gateway to the rest of the world. Buffalo was the transfer point. You had to unload the freighter, store that grain somehow, until you're ready to load it into a canal boat. Trade through the Erie Canal turned Buffalo into a powerhouse, with more millionaires per capita than any other city in the US. But for the little guy, the work was dangerous. When the ships docked in Buffalo, the only way to get the grain out was by hand. Men would go into the boats, scoop it into bushels. Each bushel weighed 60 pounds. There were two bushels on each back. It would carry it up about 65 feet to the, to the top of the grain elevator and then dump it in. 
It would take sometimes a week to unload a ship, and these are smaller ships. They got paid by the barrel, so they had an incentive to move as fast as possible. It must have been backbreaking labor. This device here is a bosun's chair. A fellow young man usually, 18, 19, would be put on the swing, and then they would hit the side of the silo with a broom or an oar and loosen up the dust. And one of the men who was on one of my tours said that while he was working here for a two-year period, three young men fell off of this and drowned in the silo. And there were no employees' rights back then. But that was it. Take it or leave it. If you didn't want it, there were a hundred others who would. Trading in grain was slow and dangerous. But in 1843, a businessman in Buffalo had a unique proposition. Around the same time that the Erie Canal was being built, an entrepreneur called Joseph Dart came to Buffalo, and he took a great interest in the grain industry. He looked at the processes in place, and he thought he could do it better. Joseph Dart was an inventor and entrepreneur. His idea was a grain elevator. This here is the actual grain elevator. This is the part that would swing out and into the boat, go into the bottom of the boat, and bring the grain up to the top of the grain elevators. Inside the swinging leg was a belt equipped with dozens of buckets. The leg would be lowered into the boat's cargo hold, and a steam engine would turn the belt, carrying up grain by the bucket load. It was an innovation that transformed the grain business. What would take a week to unload could be done in a matter of maybe 10 hours, 12 hours of a boat. Dart's elevator meant more grain was moving through Buffalo than ever before. Soon, a dozen new concrete silos were built, giving this place its name, Silo City. These buildings were built in the early 1900s. Uh, this one here was one of the first, if not the first in the world to be of its, its sort. Buffalo went from being one of the most important grain ports in the world to the most important grain port in the world. This was Buffalo at its economic height, but it wasn't gonna last. In the 19th century, the Erie Canal had turned Buffalo into an economic powerhouse. But the city was about to learn the hard way that business is business. In 1959, a new waterway opened, a new version of the Erie Canal in a way, the St. Lawrence Seaway. This was a system of canals and locks that allowed ocean-going ships to come from the Atlantic and sail directly into the Great Lakes. When the St. Lawrence Waterway opened, it made the Erie Canal irrelevant. The new seaway took all the trade from the old canal and from Silo City. Buffalo was no longer the terminal to the world. It was completely cut out of the deal. Over the next 40 years, production at Silo City ground to a halt. Nature is going to take these over someday. It might be 400 years from now, but nature will. The examples of fern, trees growing on the roofs, moss growing. And one time when I came up here, I was up 12 stories. My friend the fox was waiting for me. So it's going to happen. Many of the silos have been repurposed as centers for art and history living fossils of a golden age. <laughs>